Clayton. Um, for, if you can, anybody else can move in closer to their neighbor, we can get some more of these families in. That would be awesome. Thank you very much and happy Easter.
Good morning, Good morning and happy Easter. happy Easter. Welcome to all visiting and worshiping with us today, as well as to those joining us via the live stream. Please, in courtesy, silence all electronic devices. A few announcements. Corrections to the worship aid for Easter celebrations this morning. The parish office will next be open on April 2nd, at 8.30 a.m. And please remain seated for the Easter sequence that is after the second reading. Also, remember in prayers the priest's intentions for whom this Mass is offered. Let us take a moment in silent prayer to recall that we are gathered as the body of Christ to pray and sing God's praises.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Happy Easter. Easter. Our happiness comes because Christ is risen. Therefore, our Easter joy is our knowledge of his victory over death. It leads us to be grateful for the endless love of our Savior and a confidence that humbles us to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance 
who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, 
If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. In reminder, please remain seated during the singing of our Easter sequence.
Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We often tease about our local weather. If you don't like it, wait 10 minutes and it will change. Since February, it's felt like it's been changing quite frequently. An early warm spell, which allowed the daffodils to spring up early. But since then, we've had a steady diet of warm weekdays and frigid weekends, chilly nights and mornings with quite comfortable days. Last Sunday, it was too windy on Saturday afternoon for our Palm Sunday procession to begin outside and too cold on Sunday morning at the early mass. But by 11.15, it had warmed up enough for me to decide we could do it. I think it's because I wanted to do it. It's warm enough, even if not warm for everyone else. It's the kind of weather from day to day and week to week that leaves us wondering as spring and fall often do. Well, I need an extra layer. When I've gone out, well, I wish I had a coat, gloves and a hat perhaps, or the opposite in which we put our layers on and then the warmth of day comes upon us and we wish we had dressed a little lighter. We hear that Jesus' burial cloths are left behind, the only sign that he was once there to his disciples. Witnessed first by John as he had raced ahead of Peter to the tomb after Mary of Magdala had let them know that the tomb was open and empty. Peter heads in and finds even the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' lifeless head. It might seem ironic to us that our gospel narrative of our Lord's resurrection does not include him. What is included is the response of his disciples to the absence of his presence. An absence which leads us in finding these burial cloths left behind to strive to understand the fullness present in that absence. Our focus is meant to be then a reminder that we take on Christ's burial cloth in our baptism, a white garment, a white garment given to us. As we are told, through baptism, we become a new creation and being clothed in Christ. The white of the garment is a reminder that The stain of sin is washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. His paschal sacrifice for us, his passion and death. The time in the tomb amidst those burial cloths, seemingly bound forever, leads us to find in the empty tomb with these burial cloths left behind a reminder that Jesus' death and resurrection does not exempt us from our own death, but rather, 
it reminds us that through our death in baptism we may be joined to his resurrection as our newly baptized last evening at the Easter vigil after they got dried off since they were inside our baptismal font with me they came back into church wearing that white garment a reminder to all of us that they were now unbound by sin unbound by the reality of sin and unbound from their own it is this renewal that is meant to be a constant reminder for us especially on Easter Sunday as each of us as they did last evening introduced themselves to the promises of baptism that we ourselves renew them reminded that in baptism we have been unbound and yet we still choose to bind ourselves back up which is why our renewal of baptismal promises always begins with first acknowledging the need to renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises a false notion of freedom that seems to be an openness to us to what we want but is in fact a dead end a closed tomb closed and sealed we find in the open tomb of Christ that we in baptism who then after rejecting Satan and all his works and all his empty promises then profess our belief in the Father who sent us our Savior and our Savior who in dying and rising for us then through the gift of the Holy Spirit and the life of the church not only forgives our sins but through this forgiveness invokes, invites us to share in his resurrection it is a reminder that is necessary for us but as Saint Augustine noted oh happy fall a way in which by a reminder that we do sin that we then in seeking our sins forgiveness understand better the need to live its freedom might seem out of season but like I noted at the beginning of my homily if you looked ahead at next week forecast you see we're going to get down to the 30s again so I'll make a reference to Christmas <laughs> in Charles Dickens a Christmas Carol as Ebenezer Scrooge's old business partner and long deceased Jacob Marley begins to rattle his way in chains up the steps towards Scrooge's apartment and passes through that closed door and entering the door he unwraps the burial cloth which has been around his head and remained with him immediately upon removing the cloth his mouth droops down a openness that frightens Scrooge appropriately but an openness as the story leads us to find not simply the necessity but the possibility of renewal and for us then to look to the promises of our baptism and a reminder of the white garment in which we have been clothed that recognizing the dignity that has been given to us we then strive to bring that dignity unstained to the everlasting life of heaven a dignity only possible as we allow it to be cleansed by the blood of the lamb and in doing so then wear that which we are appropriately dressed in not an extra layer but the fitting layer the layer that reminds us always who we are so that where we are we might find our response to our risen Lord to be as fitting as his call to allow us then who strive to live our understanding that he had to rise from the dead to fit us appropriately so that we then in faith and hope allow ourselves in renewing our baptismal promises to acknowledge that though still a limit it is a limit that through the empty tomb through the burial cloth left behind that we wear we are reminded of the freedom we are called to live the freedom of the life of God as we have been dressed in him
Please stand, sisters and brothers. The Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, we renew the promises of baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. God's faithfulness to his promise for us leads us to have trust in his life of abundance. And so we raise our minds and hearts in these prayers of intercession. For the church, may this season of joy inspire us to share the good news with all. Let us pray to the into communion and confirmed that the light of their witness to all Christ said and did bring them a share in his victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all away from family and friends during 
the compassion of our Paschal victim brings them comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may live the renewal of our baptismal promises with zeal and deeper commitment to Jesus' call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, that they may rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, as you offer us the life of glory, may the prayers we offer this Easter day increase our faith and hope in your eternal love. For you live and reign forever and ever.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by these paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.
wise, I feel like, I mean, it's no good to bother. Ha, ha, ha. 